Hey guys, it's Aiden from Gamers Class. Today I'm going to be starting a series where I'm going to be making videos on the top tips to climb the ranks in Dota, um, primarily as a carry player. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to be covering the first rank of Dota or the lowest rank, which will be Herald to Guardian. And I'm going to um, give a couple of tips and things I think you should be focusing on in order to improve and to get to the next level. So. If you like this kind of content, go to GamersGuys.com. For just $10 a month, get your replays analyzed, watch masterclasses with pro players, join weekly coaching sessions, win prizes, and more with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. Uh, before we start the video, I'm just going to go through the layout of how the video is going to be um, explained. So. Uh, Firstly, I'm going to be just mentioning a couple of tips and tricks that you should be um, focusing on just in general. That, uh, so just like general tips you need to improve your game and some of the knowledge you're going to need in order to improve. And then, then I'm going to be going into laning stage. Um, so things you need to be focusing on the laning stage, uh, the main things you should be doing. Then we're going to be going into mid game and uh, then I'm going to cover the late game. So I'll be talking about item builds um, in the in like most parts of the in most parts of the game, because obviously um, throughout the game, the items you buy are different, obviously. Right. Uh, there's lots of different things you need to do at every point of the game. And I'm just going to be mentioning some of the most important things. So starting the video here um the first thing i want to start off with is um don't be discouraged by losing games um and never like blame your teammates for losses and instead of doing those things rather focus on the things you can do to improve your game um because at the end of the day <laughs> the only way you're ever going to get out of a certain bracket is if you be if you become better than the average player in that bracket right um so it's super important that you instead of like focusing on maybe some of the mistakes your teammates make in the games and maybe blaming losses for that instead rather just look at the mistakes you make and try to improve on that um so yeah uh the second thing i want to say here is uh, using sites like Dota Buff and Dota 2 Pro Tracker, um, these are basically sites that just have a lot of stats on Dota, a lot of stats on all the heroes, heroes win rates, hero matchups. Um, it also has a lot of matches from pro players, and this can be very useful if you're looking to improve and just get general information. Um, it's something I've used a lot throughout the time I played Dota, which has been a very long time now. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, the highest MMR achieve I've achieved is 8,200 and the main role I do play is, say, playing carry. Um, so I've been playing the game for about 10 years and this is one of the really important things I think that maybe some people don't do. I'm pretty sure most people do use it though. So if you're not using it, make sure that you check out these places and get all the info you need, right? Because obviously in the Dota client, uh, there's there is a lot of info but these stats can be really useful and another one like of the really useful things about these using these sites is that you're going to be able to see all the uh the, the builds that pro players use and even just high mmr players right and these are things you should definitely be looking at if you're looking to get there um so yeah uh the third thing also i want to try i want to uh, mention here is that Try to focus on no more than five heroes, right, in your role. So obviously in in this video series, I'm going to be carrying carry role, uh, covering carry hole, uh, role. So basically, don't try to do more than five heroes. I'd say if you want to go higher than five heroes, you can, but at least try keep it below 10, right? Like... Um, if, if you are gonna if you really 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 want to go over five heroes then you can um, but again just try keep a limit on it and don't try to learn every carry hero at once um, and in herald specifically i'd say it's not the biggest deal on which heroes you're playing um, there are obviously in each meta a lot of heroes are going to be stronger than others and 
in turn they will be picked more often but honestly i don't think you need to focus on this that much if you're um in the herald bracket what i would do is i would just focus on heroes that maybe i've uh, i'm already playing and i enjoy playing or heroes that i'm already comfortable on um and basically try to keep around five heroes and just practice those heroes um and what is this, what this is going to do is you're going to start to learn matchups really well um you're going to obviously just get comfortable using the spells on your heroes and it's just going to make the the process of improving a lot easy because easier because you're not going to need to learn a whole new hero every time you play the game right you can you at least feel comfortable with that um so yeah um the fourth tip here i want to mention is so the main things you're going to need to focus on in order to get out of this bracket is basically just the basics of dota and the mechanics right so this comes down to learning heroes what hero spells do so obviously in this guide this is carry role specifically um but at the same time it's really important to know what every hero in uh, dota does right because a lot of the time if you're playing against a hero and you know you have no idea what their spells do it's going to be really hard to play against that hero so obviously learning like all the heroes all their spells um is super important just the the basics you know um nothing too fancy just getting a general idea of what you need to look at when playing against certain heroes um so these things are all going to be really really important right if you want to improve um and another thing also is one of the main things you need to do is just focusing on minimizing your mistakes in your game so that is obviously a pretty obvious one um but it's at the same time it's really important and when i say mistakes i mean as a carry player primarily your, your mistakes are going to be your deaths right your big mistakes are going to be the deaths you have in your game and you, you want to try and minimize this as much as possible because if you can if you if you cannot die in like let's say five games in a row as a herald player um while actually playing the game and playing the lane uh you're gonna probably win most of those games i think because in a lot of the games i play at these really really low ranks um, a lot of the time it's just constant fighting right and it means like neither carry player ever gets items or farm and it kind of just comes down to a roulette of who who's like who gets the most items out of the couple of fights that happened right um so try to add some structure to your gameplay um think about all of the moves you are making and uh, just try to die as little as possible it's really 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 important um so yeah those are some of the tips that i wanted to cover and now i'm going to be going into the laning stage um so yeah so firstly the item build so obviously um at every point of the game the item build is going to be a pretty important thing but in the laning stage what i would suggest is firstly um in in your dota client um in the shop i would suggest selecting a guide first of all um so personally i use uh immortal faith's guides on pretty much every hero just because he uh he lists a lot of like good items to use um in the uh in the shop and in mo he, he basically there's just a lot of items that are good in a lot of situations right um so basically following a guide something like this in the shop is going to be really helpful also looking at some of the builds that professional players use is also going to be really good so i'd suggest you look at that um, and basically just try follow that right um, i think for the most part you don't really need to be doing anything special when you're playing at this rank obviously if you feel like you're comfortable with like a lot of the things i've already said and maybe you're not a new player you've been playing really long but you're just stuck in herald and you already know these things um then feel free to take it to the next level right um you don't need to limit yourself just because you're at a lower rank you can learn as you can do like as many things as you want right and the more you do the more games you're gonna win um so generally like the way you would approach it is you're gonna buy items that are good against the heroes that you're laning against right um so that's gonna come down to a lot of game sense a lot of games played obviously learning what some what heroes strengths are and then learning what items deal with that well right so this is like generally how good play like very good players will itemize when they're 
playing at all stages of the game but around the hero bracket most of the time you just want to have enough regen to get through the lane um you want to have stats and when you're playing a melee hero you want quailing blade most of the time right so first first thing i just want to say is most of the time i'd recommend getting at least more than uh one set of tangos try at least getting two set of tangos for the start of the lane um there's like some really common builds for agility melee heroes um you can also just follow like quelling blade double tango um slipper of agility and double branch this is a really good build it's a lot of damage and it's a good regen you know you just basically need stats damage uh and regen and basically the quelling blade and the uh the slippers and the branches do all that um so that builds really good you can also do like quelling blade uh tango healing solve um and then slippers of agility double branch so this is like the same build except you're just cutting out one set of tangos for a solve right so basically just try to have stats try to have enough regen um and also you're generally buying a quelling blade when you're playing the melee hero right but for the most part use these guides on the client they're going to help you a lot with the heroes you need uh with the items you're going to want to buy during the lane um and follow those for the most part if if you feel like you um if you if you have a reason to buy a particular item because you think it's very good against the hero you're going to be laning against um then by all means go for it as long as you have a reason for what you're doing um i think it's a really good way to approach the game um so some of the other things in the laning stage that i think you should be focusing on so yeah item builds um obviously that's really important just covered that and then the second thing that i've noticed a lot of the low mmr players have struggles with is their camera placement so when it comes to camera placement basically you just want to be able to see like as much of the wave and as much as the enemy heroes as possible right um so basically the way ideally you want to place your camera is you always want to have um your camera always like around the creep wave so you can see all the creeps right so you always have vision of the range creep and you always have vision of the enemy heroes right um and the way you want to do this you basically just have when you're laning at least you're gonna have your camera like um just like on the edge of your hero right because pretty much in every lane if if two heroes are showing top and one is showing mid there's no way a hero can be behind you right if there's two heroes in front of you and the rest of them are showing in their other lanes there's no way they can be behind you so you always want to like use your camera to show as much as possible and this this doesn't just go for the lane this goes for the whole game it's a really important thing because a lot of the time when i'm watching replays of low mmr players i can't even see what's going on in the lane because they're not looking at it from their perspective right so here this is i'm looking at a perspective of this game and we can see here his the way he's placing his camera makes it very hard to actually see what's going on right his camera is very far back when it could just be right here right there's no reason for his camera to be looking at this part so i think this is something that a lot of low or herald players in general don't pay attention to and maybe aren't aware of and it's definitely making it a lot harder for you to um play the lane as as good as you want to right so definitely something you should be aware of try to um try to make a a point of being aware of that at least right and making sure that you can try and improve on it um second thing here or the third thing is focus on last hitting right and last hitting taking as little damage as possible as the carry player your main goal out of pretty much every point of the game but mainly the laning stage is you're looking to get out of the lane um, with as much net width as possible right so um in the hero bracket specifically uh, you're basically just looking to do this right you're basically just looking to get out of the lane with a lot of with a decent amount of gold so that you can scale into the mid game and if you can do that you're gonna win at least like 80 percent of your games um if you can just get out of the lane with let's say at least 4k net worth by minute 10 if you can do that every game you're gonna win most of your games um so the way you do this 
in the lane like i said you you're, you're focusing primarily on last hitting you're trying to take as little damage from the enemies as possible so this means um not tanking spells um making it hard for them to cast their spells on you um and all these things right um positioning in a way where they can't hit you this you don't need to worry about too much but just try be aware of it right um secondly here is something that we just saw in this replay here is um don't overextend yourself to try and get kills that are going to give you a chance to die right so we see here in this case he gets a he gets a they get a kill on the sand king and then he dives in into the tower right to try get a second kill on the wraith king under his tower when he has no spells left right so as a carry player you never want to put yourself in these situations okay you always want to make sure every play you're doing has a has almost a zero percent chance of you dying right in some cases obviously there will be chances of you dying but you always want to make it as as little chance as possible so never try to put yourself in situations where you're going to trade a kill for a kill if the if the kill that the enemy is going to get on you and the kill you're going to get is on their offlane or their pause four most of the time it's not going to be worth it for you so don't try and put yourself in those situations um Okay, and then as we move on here, um, so yeah, like I said, the main priority is try try to aim for some goals right in your laning stage. Try to see if you can get certain net worths by the 10 minute mark. Um, having around anything, like I said, above, above 4k net worth at the minute 10 is really good uh, in the Herald bracket. So you should definitely um, try to do that. And then okay so as we move on here learning the basics of creep aggro um so that you don't aggro creeps into bad positions or try to fight enemies um and then also like aggroing the creeps on you at the same time right so basically if you don't know what creep aggroing means or how it works it's basically a mechanic in dota 2 where if you're standing near enemy creeps and you a click on an enemy hero those creeps are going to start attacking you right um so basically if i'm this jug right now and this wraith king runs into the lane and i just right click him or a click on him all these creeps are going to start attacking you, me right because the as soon as i uh hit uh make an attack move on the on the wraith king the creeps are going to start attacking me that's just how the mechanics work in dota if you're if you're a clicking on shadow fiend on the on the other side of the map um the creeps are also going to aggro on you so there's no range on the aggro basically if you look top right now it's this juggernaut and you a click or right click on this drug every creep in this lane here is going to attack you right um so basically these creeps have a range on how far the aggro is the range is around it's not it, it's around like from this creep here to around maybe just before this melee creep right so you kind of just need to like learn the aggro but you don't need to you don't need to focus on that right the main thing i want you to just do is understand the mechanic right just un just know that the mechanic is there and when you're going for fights and you're maybe going to click this guy in the lane, right? You want to harass him in the lane. Just be aware of how these creeps are going to react when you do that, okay? Um, it's a really important thing that you need to understand in order to minimize taking damage in the lane. And also just creating situations where we're going to put the lane in an awkward spot, right? If you just start aggroing creeps. Um, so yeah, these are the main points I think you should be focusing on um, as a hero player. If you're trying to get to Guardian, just the, the, the simplest things in the lane. Um, if you can do these correctly, minimize minimize putting yourself in situations where you can die and using your spells like um, with your support. If you're ever going for kills, make sure that you're that firstly the lane is in a good position. The lane isn't deep. It's it's on your side of the it's closer to your tower rather than theirs so that you have distance to work with and also make sure that you're casting your spells together with your support right um so w let's say you want to go for a kill you think you're stronger than the enemy then you should like ping and then your support is going to be aware that you want to do that right um 
So yeah, those are the main things that I want you to think about during the laning stage. Um, as a carry player in the Herald bracket, I think these things are going to help you a lot if you can pinpoint them in your games and focus on them. Um, but one of the main things just like over, over underlining here is I think try to focus on not putting yourself in bad positions right try not to put yourself in positions where you're under the enemy's tower diving them when they're maybe full hp just because you killed someone right and you have no spells these things are like the main things that you need to focus on just these basic mistakes like this right overextending going for kills that aren't gonna work out really really important um and yeah so at this point gonna move on in to the mid game tip so i'm going to skip forward a little bit here in the replay to around post laning stage so in the mid game generally the mid game is this is more the post laning stage um the mid game is generally more around the 15 minute mark right so we'll move towards the 15 minute mark and yeah so I'll, I'll talk a bit about this so at this point of the game like the most uh most of the time you're going to be getting like your first item right so depending on your hero this item is either going to be like a battle fury for example if you're playing a hero like anti-mage or it might be a diffusal blade if you're playing a hero like phantom lancer right and obviously each of these items are very different they have different purposes and you're going to be do doing different things depending on the items you buy right so if you're playing a hero that is like anti-mage a very hard carry you want to you, you want to farm at least probably like two to three items before you're looking to fight a lot um most of the time you're going to be buying battle fury right also on a lot of other heroes like juggernaut for example in this replay um you can kind of decide what item you want to go right you can go the farming route or you can go the um the fighting route as well in terms of your item build so most of the time basically i think you don't need to think too much about what you want to buy i think most of the time if you're just buying items to farm it's gonna work out just because i feel like in the herald bracket there's a lot of space on the map you're never really gonna get punished ever for trying to farm um, but again as you improve and get into higher uh, ranks this can become a bad habit so you want to make sure that you are at least understand the fundamentals of the whole thing right so i'm going to be explaining that to you and so basically if you're buying a battle fury you're buying this item to accelerate your farm right and if you're trying to accelerate if you're buying an item that's solely there to make you kill creeps faster and it doesn't do that much to heroes it doesn't assist you in killing heroes that much then you're primarily just going to be focused on farming creeps right so obviously there are exceptions to that in the game and that just comes down to knowing the situations and knowing when fights are good enough for you to join right so most of the time when you're going to a build like battle fury you're just going to be farming um, while you're farming you should try to look around the map see what's going on um, and the only fights you're ever going to be really joining are fights that you're Either you see a fight that's break, uh, breaking out between the enemy and your teammates that are, let's say, close to a tower, then you could consider TPing in there, right? You're a jug with a battle fury, but you can still TP to a tower where enemies are diving, and you can use Omni Slash and Blade Spin and Healing Ward, right? You still have use, useful spells. Um, so this is basically the way you want to think about it if you're play if you're playing the more hard carry with farming items like Battle Fury right you're primarily going to be focused on shoving out lanes and farming jungle as safely as possible right avoiding the enemies and farming and the only time you're ever really going to be fighting is when you can tp into a fight that your teammates have already started um, an important thing is to try to avoid uh, starting fights right you never really want to be the guy starting the fights as the carry player um, generally it's going to be your mid laner um, or your off laner or even a support it depends on the heroes um so on the other side is obviously you're going for a more fighting boat right in the mid game um 
And in this case, if you're going for items like that, it means that you feel like you can just run over your opponents, right? It means that your lane went pretty well most of the time. Um, you feel like your hero has good matchups. Your heroes do well against the enemy's heroes. And if you buy, let's say your, your Phantom Lancer, you buy your Diffusal Blade. As soon as you get your Diffusal, you can take fights and probably get a couple of successful fights, right? Th that's the reason why you're buying that item. Um, so so yeah in that case when you're buying items like maybe drums into mantis style or you're buying drums into diffusal or you're just buying diffusal then you're gonna look to join some fights right you're gonna look to get involved but again just because you're buying these items doesn't mean you're gonna overextend and dive tier twos and tier ones right you're looking for still smart engagements and you're always gonna be making sure that the fights you are taking have a very very low chance of you ever dying in those fights right so even if you're going the other if you're going items that make you stronger that means you want to fight you're still always making sure that when you do take fights there's a very low chance of you dying um and you you're always going to come out of that fight with maybe one kill or two kills and you're not going to die right it's very very important throughout the whole game as the carry player always put your situation your yourself in situations where there's a low chance of you dying um the other thing here is so yeah that's like the main things you need to know about that point um one of the so, so basically just firstly recognizing whether you're farming or you're going to be looking to join fights and this obviously is going to depend on how well your lane went it's going to depend on what items you're buying if you're buying battle fury you're not going to look to um, fight constantly right so yeah that's basically just the way you want to think about it and then the other thing you in general that you're just going to be looking for is most of the time you're just looking to fight when you get item timings right if your team let's say it's 20 it's 22 minutes in the game um you're a you're an anti-mage you have yasha you uh you have battle fury and you're a thousand gold from your manta style right and your team is pinging you and they are saying that they want you to fight or whatever right the, the way you're always going to be approaching on times you want to fight and times you want to go and fight the enemies as a carry hero is based on your items okay so if you're a thousand gold of an item that's going to make you like twice as strong or three times as strong you want to avoid fighting okay and you you're just going to be farming you're going to be shoving out waves and you're going to be avoiding the enemies okay um and then when you get your items those are the times you're going to look to fight okay so it might sound off uh, it might sound very obvious a very obvious thing to do um but it's something you need to make sure that you do in your games right because if you have one two three deaths before you get that manta style or before you get that second item or that first item whatever you're looking for all those deaths stack up and it just makes the game that much harder right um so it's really really important to make sure that you're not uh, willingly going into fights that um at times where you're not strong enough right times where you haven't finished your item that you need or the item you feel you feel makes you really strong at that point of the game right um so this is a really really important point playing around your timings and most importantly uh, just focus on your item timings okay there's not too much else to worry about when you're playing in this bracket if you're just making sure that you're fighting when you get your items when you get your power spikes you're gonna do well and you're gonna win most of your fights um okay and then that's most of the mid game points i want to uh, i wanted to cover and then i'm going to be moving into the uh late game and also just uh, just a note on the mid game thing i also want to talk a, a tad bit about the item builds so most games like item builds are influenced by the heroes you're playing against right so for examples of this um in some cases you might buy a bkb earlier than you would want to than you normally would sorry because you're playing against like maybe a lineup with a lot of stuns and a lot of magic damage right and your hero is pretty weak first that so let's say you're playing a pa you're against a viper you're against a earth shaker you're against sand king these heroes have blinks vipers 
uh, nether toxin disables your passives it makes you very weak you're gonna want a bkb earlier than normal right you're probably going like baba fury bkb or you're going desolate a bkb or something like this right um and in so so yeah like a lot of the time this this is how you should buy your items um maybe in some games you're playing against physical damage heroes right so you don't want a bkb you want items that make you resistance against physical damage so items like hellbird items like butterfly agility items in general just items that give you armor and make you resistant to physical damage are going to be better right so a lot of the time you do want to look for situations like these if you're not sure about what heroes do and you're not sure about what items are good against heroes then rather just follow um item builds until you do start to understand what is good versus certain heroes okay so item builds like in the in the client um browsing guides just choose a, a, a guide i recommend a mortal faith guides because i just think his guides are overall pretty good and then basically just buying some of the items that are recommended here right so um for the most part you're looking at like your core items here and then you're looking to buy those right um and also as you play heroes more you're gonna you're gonna get a feeling of what what items are good and when they are good what timings they feel good and which timings they feel bad um it's all a process of just learning um what's good and when it's good right so the, regarding the item build in the uh, the mid game that's generally how you're going to be looking at it but again if you don't feel confident about buying items specifically against the heroes you're playing against because you don't understand the heroes that well then rather just look at guides and follow those until you do understand it um or if you want to experiment you can do that as well um but you it might um in the at the start while you're still learning it obviously might uh, cause some games to be lost um okay so as we're moving on into the late game here gonna um, just cover some of the more important things about the late game this is going to be one of the shorter parts of the guide here so just starting off most of the late game is going to come down to paying attention to the map and making sure that you have an idea where the enemy's positions are right so the most important thing is just making sure you're not getting caught out solo and dying let's say against five heroes um, as a solo hero let's say you're farming a wave it's 40 minutes into the game you're at the bottom tier two and you're just hitting it and then the enemy comes and hexes you and they just kill you right these are the type of things you need to avoid you need to be looking at your map paying attention to where the lanes are um, if your lanes are pushed into your towers most probably the enemies are going to try and make a move on you if uh, if your lanes are pushed into their towers it's a good time to make a, a play on them right because you have better vision because your creeps are deeper in the lane um, so paying attention to the map really really important some of the other things you need to focus on is roshan roshan is very very important throughout the game um primarily he's going to come up in the mid game and also the late game he's super super important right because generally the teams that are killing rush is gonna is gonna win the game right because they get an extra life they get cheese they get all these things the more times you kill them right so it's a really really important part of the map that you need to make sure you're focusing on um and you make sure that you contest it when you can and you take it when you can right before going high ground um because it's a huge huge advantage so another really important thing um about the late game is buybacks so in a lot of cases you would rather have your buyback than having that maybe extra item right or finishing that item um so a lot of the times you'll see what people do is they're saving up their gold until they have enough um, gold to buy the item and have their buyback okay so if you don't know how this works and you don't know how to check in dota you can actually check like how much gold you need until you have enough item for the gold and the buyback and basically the way you, you do this is obviously when you look here there's a lot of numbers but the only things you really need to look at is your gold okay and then your your it's, it shows there your your gold needed for buyback in red okay so you always want to be um you always want to be checking how much you how much you need for buyback right okay and then if you actually like out 
if, if you have a uh, item queued up in your quick buy and you alt control click on it it's going to show how much gold you need for that item and buy back okay so it's really really important during the late later stages of the game before you're going to push or before you're taking fights um that you have your buyback available right because a lot of the time your buyback can be the difference between you winning and losing a game it's super super important um that you pay attention to having that and primarily this is relevant in the late game in the mid game in some cases it can be relevant but honestly in the hero bracket i don't think it matters too much um generally in the late game you just want to be focusing on this right you want to make sure that you have enough gold for your buyback um so that if fights do go wrong or let's say you take a fight at the rush pit you die from a hex you don't get your spells off you can buy back and you can go contest the rush right and then you maybe kill them and then you can kill russian and get the ages and your buyback was very worth it so a lot of cases throughout the late game where your buyback is going to be really really valuable and you want to make sure that you save that um so yeah those are the main points of the late game that i think you should be focusing on and that's going to be the video guys so thanks for watching the video um this was just a guide as a carry player um mainly focusing on herald players to uh if you want to get to you know like guardian rank but obviously if you're guardian rank or even probably the rank above this these tips will also be really useful um so yeah that's going to be the video guys thanks for watching i hope these tips help you and good luck on the grind catch you in the next one